Hey man, I told y'all, I told y'all, man, they grabbed money bag, yo, at his concert, man. As soon as he walked right close to the edge, that's when they got him. They grabbed his foot, man. Hey, listen to this whole video, subscribe to this channel, and comment down below. Let me know who you a fan of and where y'all from. Let's get started in this thing, man. This was crazy at the money bag, yo, concert, bro. Just like I said, if he came out with no security or anything like that, it don't stop nobody from trying him. As soon as he got close to that edge, somebody pulled him by his shoe. They grabbed him down and pulled him into the crowd. And literally, he ended up having to get, like, crawl out of it and climb over the big old speakers to get back on stage. But his tank top was ripped all the way up, man. And they was grabbing his bracelets. They tried to get the chain and everything like that. And one of his dreads even got loosed. Like, he, he didn't even know that he had a loose dread. And that even fell out, man. And so everybody at this crowd, like, the goons was trying to get out and escape. But the crowd wasn't even letting him get by. But the thing is, is that the exit, the media exit was so close that these dudes ended up just pushing over the Samoan or security guard dude. And they ran out there unscathed, man. They hopped in. They already had a getaway driver ready to go. Like, this whole thing, they already knew bag was coming and everything like that. And as soon as they started seeing him get on the stage and he had no help, no security, all them people from Memphis was with him and they didn't do nothing to stop it. Yeah, when at first, before he came on, they were hyping the crowd up. They were being the hype man. They were being the person who was the MC and all that, trying to get everybody excited. But then when Bag up there on his own, ain't nobody there to protect him. The Samoan security dudes who's hired is like deep backstage. So it's, it's a, almost like a 30 second to a minute response for them to even get out to him. But the thing is, is that Moneybag Yo should have never went that close to the edge. Like all them people in the crowds, you got to understand that. It's no sections like that. So if you could get on the stage ground and everything, you just could push your way and walk your way up close to the stage. And then it's up to the artist whether he wants to interact with the crowd and jump down and everything. So Moneybag Yo act like he was about to jump down. And as soon as they got the opportunity, boom, they snatched him. They grabbed him right by his Louis Vuitton $5,000 shoes. And the next thing you know, he came back up in just socks. They took everything, man. I'm telling y'all, bro. They really tried it. The goons pulled up, man, all the way out there at the Money Bag Yo concert. And he even had Future with him. And Future delayed his uh, whole thing because of the fact that they was waiting for everything to calm down. They dang near was about to evacuate and shut down and stop the whole show. But because of the fact that they pay Future so much money, then that's why they actually kept the thing going on. And so Money Bag Yo, on the other hand, he has to file a, a whole claim. He has to try to like put a report together to even get his stuff back or even to have it be recognized or known as missing. And that way, all the pawn shops, all the little jewelry places, the cash for gold and melt down your diamonds and melt down your metals and all that. They can't actually look for anything or pay attention to see if somebody's bringing in anything that was taken because of the fact that if there's no report on it, if there's no missing items report on it with the laws, with the boys and peoples and all them, right, then they can't actually do nothing for you because anybody could say that they have something missing and try to get a lick by just having them handed over acting like you the one who was missing it. But the thing is, is that's why they have to have an official report. So now Moneybag Yo got to go talk to the peoples. He's got to go and basically snitch and try to figure out who who did this to him, who tried him and all that, and see if he could get back his shoes, see if he could get back his bracelet and one of them chains. And the real thing is, is that Yo Gotti watched this whole thing happen. Gotti watched the whole thing happen and Big Juke was standing right there, but they didn't want to run up because of the fact that they know if they ran up or anything like that, people will recognize them and be like even more. In tr they can't afford to get into no type of scrap or no type of anything because if they scrap it out with somebody and they get in trouble for all that, then they already looking at getting looked at for the whole Dolph situation. So they just going to hold them in there until that trial comes. So that's why Big Juke couldn't run up and do anything because... He was basically like in a stalemate. He's in no man's land. He can't really do nothing right now. He under Yo Gotti's supervision 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Even uh, he, he stay, Big Juk has to go and stay. He still lives in Yo Gotti's dad's basement. That's the crazy thing is that they still live there. And the fact that Yo Gotti out, all, all out here, he's still 
pulling up and being behind the scenes. He's trying to watch everything like he like the like, you know, he got the puppet master or something like that. Right. But the thing is, is that everybody knows at this point that the CMG days is like numbered. You know what I mean? Because of the fact that the wild cell Rico might be coming after CMG next. And you already know how the people that is down south, all, everybody, all the attorneys and everybody for the uh, thing, the ADs, they basically the DA is trying to get everybody out there. And so y'all got to understand that this whole situation is could have been avoided, man, if Moneybag Yo would have just thought smarter and he could have had his chain back. He could have had his shoes back. But the thing is, is that it's all karma anyways. You know, what goes around comes around. And for them to have been involved or being seen at that Bentley or whatever what people were saying about them being connected to the Dolph situation and to the fact that they finesse, try to finesse, finesse two times. And all that, I mean, the things is coming back, you know, that same energy they put out there. You got to keep that same energy and the ups and the downs. And so this is why everybody's talking and basically looking at it like, yeah, you should have seen that coming. Y'all should have been known better to try to uh, perform with all that jewelry on, all that expensive designer on and not get touched or nothing like that. Especially when there's no net or fence. It's like, why don't they even have, they didn't have no fences or nets up. And it's like the security was backstage. They wasn't even in the crowd like they wasn't even by the stage like in front of a as a barrier to hold the people back and so that's one of the things that they slipped up on because when the promoters booked them they must have been like lackadaisical trying to get a cut they was like you know what since cmd cmg's days is number we don't know when the next time we're gonna see yo Gotti money bag yo is they might be ended up getting a whole thing in trouble or whatever and be gone away for that whole situation that they already had on their own self and so what they was thinking was like, hey, let's just get this bread for, uh, from them, get the show. We're not going to have to hire too much security because, you know, nobody's going to really want to try to uh, mess with them out here. And so that's when they that's what they thought. But they thought wrong because they got to understand that it's a whole lot of people out here who are still trying to slide for Dolph. It's a lot of people out here who still know OG Bang Wayne and literally like OG Bang Wayne is out here giving uh basically a ticket a meal ticket if you could get a chain off a of money bag yo if you could get a chain off yo Gotti, oh, uh og bang wayne is really actually like he he throwing commissions for that basically and so with all that and people knowing already how it's like Dolph land and Dolph was the king of memphis and they even ended up playing uh, one of Dolph's songs. Like, it must have been a whole new DJ or somebody that went up there because Moneybag Yo's DJ ran off a stage and went back home as soon as everything took off, man. And so somebody came up, man, and they played the Dolph song to try to clear the air because they were like, okay, okay, you know what? Let's just move forward with this, do them, throw the Dolph song on. And then next thing you know, they put on the next act and Moneybag Yo was never to be seen the rest of the time. Like, he didn't even come out and hang out to do the meet and greet with the people because what with the meet and greet, he was like, he was way too scared to end up because he thought the same people that try to already try him and snatch his stuff earlier was going to be at the meet and greet and was going to be able to get up closer and actually pull the bread gang chain off. And so what y'all got to understand is that he canceled that whole time. He canceled that and he's going to have to end up refunding or doing something to basically because he couldn't commit to that because it was already too risky and too sketchy for him already getting ran up by, by the goons and everything like that. So what y'all got to understand is, man, you got to subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment down below. Let me know where y'all from and who you a fan of. And I'm going to catch you on the next one.